So let's take a look at um, 2011 Higher Computing Pass Paper for uh, question 20, the artificial intelligence section that deals with knowledge bases and semantic nets, facts, rules and traces. Um, you can see this one starting off with it's telling you a little bit about um, the knowledge base uh, that it wants you to create. Uh, so it's giving you a paragraph of information that says there's direct flights from Glasgow to London and from London to Paris. Direct flights go from Paris to Rome and Seville. And there's also a direct flight from Rome to Berlin. And it's a real gift of a question if you get this. So the first question I ask you to do A, represent the information in the paragraph above using a semantic net. And I'm sorry I keep scrolling back and forward. It's just to keep the text at a size that you can read. So the semantic nets are really easy. What you've got to do is draw each fact in a circle, second fact in a circle, and link them with a predicate uh, and a line and an arrow. Now the arrow must go from the first fact to the second fact, and you can translate it in English by reading the predicate. So direct Glasgow and the arrow pointing to London. So there's a direct flight from Glasgow to London. So with this one, then you would just work through each of the wee facts that are included. Uh, and so the next one you need to do is, uh, so we've got Glasgow to London. Now we can see that London um, flies to Paris. So you would put Paris in a separate bubble. So this would be easier than paint probably. Um, so that we could draw it a bit quicker, but we'll just have to... We do with what we've got. Let's give myself a bit more room here. Again, it's worth taking your time over this one and making sure you do it correctly. So there we go with that piece. And if we draw our other arrow, we can see that London flies direct to Paris. I'm just going to pause this quickly here and draw the rest of it to save wasting time. So this is what you should have ended up with for your three marks there. Uh, it's all facts to do with direct flights, so you can actually see that you could fly from Glasgow to any location in this map, and it's potentially they're going to get us to look at recursion uh, here with this, um, to describe how you could get a flight from Glasgow to London, London to Paris to Rome, and then end up in Berlin, and so on. So that's for three marks. Next, you should have a look at the knowledge base here, just to see it's quite simple, this one. There's not a lot of facts at all. As you can see here, they've just made a knowledge base up of our semantic net. Uh, so you've got to see here that Glasgow can fly direct to London, London can fly direct to Paris, and so on. And then they have um, their rules. So they have the indirect rule here, um, which is going to use a bit of uh, recursion uh, to call these rules here, we can see, well, possibly not, we'll see how this one actually pans out. As you can see that we have got a couple of different pieces of information there. The trace is going to be quite tricky for this one because it will match in sub goals there, so um, a few different sub goals. I will look at that in a minute when we come to it. So part B, first of all, explain the term sub goal. So a sub goal is uh, part of an overall rule which must be satisfied in order to prove the overall rule. Uh, E.g., uh, if we look at our one here, um, we can see that line six has a sub or uh, one sub goal. And it's direct P Q. Right, quite a straightforward one. That's what I ask quite often as well. Uh, on to part C. How many marks is that? So I'll go for probably one, one or two. That's not bad. Quite a good start. State the solutions to the query. Now be careful with this. People before have started tracing them and been there for a while. So it's two marks. So I'll just literally state and where does direct Paris X match. So let's look up. It can only match one of five places. So line one, two, three, four, and five all of direct. The only ones that have Paris are two, three, and four. But we need to be careful and look back at where Paris was. Paris has got to be in the first fact. 
So it matches at line 3 and 4, so I'm going to just write that. Matches at line 3 and 4, but where we get the marks uh, is for saying that x equals um, Rome and x equals Seville, as in it wants to know what locations can you go directly to Paris from. D, let's look at tricky again. State the complex query. That will determine which airport can and a silly thing in my road can fly to both Rome and Seville. Complex query to determine which airport can fly to both Rome and Seville. So we are going to have to say that Rome and Seville. So we direct X goes to Rome and direct. X also goes to Seville. Now that's some of them I've been up before they've been a little bit difficult. I guess just practice and looking at the knowledge base will let you work it out. And if you kind of write it out in English brief it so X flies directly to Rome and X flies directly to Seville, it kinda almost matches of how you would write it in English, and that's what I would tend to do is write it out um first of all and then try and kind of match it up with the facts underneath it. Now here's this trace, it's going to be quite tricky for 7 marks, so not actually a lot, there's, there's been 8 mark traces before. So again, it's good to get any good habits with these, and uh, I'm just going to move on to a completely new page, just to keep it out of the way. Uh, what I like to do is start off by writing down the exact trace that I need to prove, or find solutions to, so it's one stop Glasgow Y, so where can you fly Glasgow from one stop? And it's asking us to trace as far as the first solution. Sometimes there's two uh, solutions, so we need to be careful. In your answer, we're going to get credit for the correct use of the term instantiation and instantiated, which is always the case. Sometimes they'll ask for backtracking as well, depending on uh, what your trace is actually doing. So, good habits here. First thing we want to do is match it. So where does one stop Glasgow Y match? It matches at line 7. And the first thing we want to do is we can see that X and Y match up with uh, X and Glasgow. And Y doesn't match up with anything. So we can see that X instantiated to Glasgow. And we can see that this rule has two um, sub goals which are other rules in our knowledge base. Now it's not recursive because it's not calling itself. What it's using is other rules in the sub goal. So we move on and do the sub goal one. Now this is going to get quite tricky because we've got um, different parts where it matches. So we've got to be really careful we keep track of everything well here. So I'm just going to look at one line at a time. So sub goal one is fly direct x z not looking at anything else now next before you go and try and match it you've got to figure out do you know any of the x and z's and we do we know that x is glasgow so we're now actually looking for fly direct glasgow z and if we look from top to bottom this matches at line six so we can say there that sub goal one is true just to keep track and move on now this is actually a new rule it's matching with uh, rather than being moving on to the next sub goal so this this matches there so what we've got to do is instantiate this time again you can see it matches with p and q this time so i'm just going to keep track and say p instantiated to glasgow and so we can keep track of it i'm going to say q equals z just so that when uh, things uh, get tricky, we see that Q and Z matched. So we got a sub goal one of new rule, and write that down. So we've got direct P Q. Substitute in the things that we do know. We know that P is Glasgow. We don't know Q, but we know Q and Z, there's a link between them. So where does direct Glasgow Q match? Well, it matches 
at line one. So let's write that down, keep track of it. Matches at line one, Q slash Z instantiated to London. Now this has actually just proven that sub goal one is true. It was a wee bit early in saying that sub goal one was true earlier here for finding a match for it. Um, so we're proving that sub goal one is true now. So we should have said it here, sub goal one uh, of first rule is true because we found a match for this new rule we were on. So we can now move on to sub goal two. And again, keeping good habits, just write down exactly what we're looking for. So fly direct um, Z Y. So if we look back at the information we found out already, we know that Glasgow is X and we know that Z has been instantiated to London. We know that P is Glasgow. So the only one we have here is in fact London. So fly direct London Y. So where does fly direct London Y match? Well, it's going to be similar again because it matches at line six. If we look over here, we can see there's the fly direct rule. And again, keeping track of exactly what we found the instantiations because London is now going to be instantiated to P and Q and Y are going to be a link, so let's keep a track of that. So um, P instantiated to London. Forget all about the fact that P uh, was instantiated to Glasgow a minute ago. We're on a new part of the trace now. Uh, y equals Q, just to keep track of that for us as well. So P instantiated to London. Uh, y equals Q. Then we've got a sub goal 1. And if you want to just keep saying again, uh, just to keep yourself track. You've been here before of new rule and write down exactly what that is again and that's direct p q substitute in the variables that we found these uninstantiated variables and so we're looking for london and q is the only uninstantiated one now and looking back at our knowledge base direct london q we can see matches at line two so matches at line two and we can see there that Q instantiated to Paris this time. And sub goal one of new rule is true. That means it's sub goal two that we were working on there that took us to this fly direct rule is true. Because it's true we move forward. Let's check if we've got any more sub goals to look at. There's none. So we can see that all sub goals are true. Therefore, overall goal is true. And uh, if we look back at our actual query, just to make sure what we're searching for, it was y and y, oops, and y equals Paris as the solution for your seven marks. Now you've got to say that to get your final mark to show that you have um, found the uh, exact match for that. Now that was quite a short AI section, in fact, uh, to do with traces. It was only worth uh, 6, 13, 16 marks, actually quite a lot. That's quite a simple. Uh, the other questions are pretty straightforward. That trace is a little bit difficult, but it's one of the ones that if you practice the different parts of it, um, you can really just get into the habit of the things you need to do and you can see there's a pattern all the way down with mine and sorry it's very messy um, is that you instantiate any values you try and substitute any values and then you match it if you can't match it then you would say that a part's false and move backwards uh, to see if there's any other solutions you can find which is called backtracking if the rule you find is true then you move on to the next sub goal and stop when there's no more sub goals that you can explore. It really is just a matter of practicing those. So have a practice at this past paper. Look at the video. Look as well. The SQA always publish the marking schemes. And we can just check quickly over those answers. Uh, these are online with the past papers as well. Uh, it's a good way of checking that you're using the correct language that the markers of the SQA are going to be looking for you to use. So we can see there 
and that we have the same semantic net for us. You can see where you get the marks uh, for that. And you can see there we're quite a similar definition of sub goal. Ours would have been acceptable as well. So we're talking about it's got to be satisfied for the overall goal to be satisfied. We said X is wrong to the um, You can see two solutions there fly direct X roam. Uh, so there's a couple of different answers to that one as well. And you can see how the SQA uh, writes out their trace. So they actually write it a little bit more succinct than I do. But I like to lay it out that way just so you're thinking about one piece at a time. But anyway, uh, if you want to practice that and if there's any questions, then you can send me a message.